Yeah. You know what? I like the playoffs. No dick a dick, no doubt. Play on, play at. Play on, play at. Yo, Trey, drop the verse. Here in New Orleans, graffiti is everywhere. It can be found on the sides of buildings, on trains, street signs, mailboxes, and even on dumpsters. Pretty much any surface that graffiti artists think will help to show off their work and to get their name out there is fair game in this city. The graffiti shown in this video is from various places. There's some from Uptown New Orleans, the Garden District, Downtown, the French Quarter, and some from Bywater. I saw many different types of graffiti all throughout the city but there were three major categories that pretty much everything I saw could be grouped in. The first category of graffiti that I noted were tags. Tags are the most common form of graffiti and are actually the graffiti artist's signature. As with a regular signature, the graffiti artist's tag is quick and easily drawn and tends to be drawn over and over again. They can take on the form of a pseudonym, a message, or even a picture. In this image here, the graffiti artist with the pseudonym Anchor has graffitied his name onto the side of a concrete building found on North Peter Street. The reason that graffiti artists take on pseudonyms is because graffitiing is a subculture. It is considered vandalism by the law and thus illegal, but many artists seek to gain fame from what they do. By taking on a false name and writing it as many times as possible, in as broad of an area as possible, their reputation increases. To the untrained eye, tags appear as unintelligible scribbles, but in reality, each signature has its own style. This image of a graffiti artist named Snake has graffitied a tag that clearly emphasizes the difference in styles as his thin lettering technique and use of dots and stars is exclusively his own. This artist, Make, also has his own unique style as he uses arrows, lines for emphasis, and a pyramid type of font scheme to write his pseudonym. Besides pseudonyms, an artist's signature can also be in the form of a message or a picture. These messages and pictures can range from political, to sentimental, to humorous. I found an abandoned building on Jackson Avenue that had the words, Love Everything, written on the high left corner. On the same building, I also found the message, There's no place like home. These messages are clearly more on the sentimental side. On the humorous side, I found a picture in a parking lot near Jackson Avenue in St. Charles of a woman's crudely drawn breast with the words Spring Break underneath. On the side of a fence on St. Claude Avenue, a picture of a woman's body with a dollar sign over her crotch was found. One message I found that really confused me was on the side of a building on St. Claude. It read, The cats are fine, my love. At first I thought this might have been a real message from one person to another, but it was on a heavily graffitied building, so I wasn't sure. The message appeared again on a side road much further down St. Claude, this time reading, Don't worry about the cats, my love. When I saw this message again on another heavily graffitied building, I determined it to be an artist tag. While tags are important for spreading one's name, they are also useful in learning about the artists who write them. The size of the tag and the location on the space that they are working with gives indications about their reputation in the graffiti community. Also, alliances are commonly formed between graffiti artists and crews can develop. These will often be graffitied alongside the artist's name and in many cases, you will see certain artists frequently tagging the same buildings. While tagging may not be the most aesthetically pleasing form of graffiti to the public, they are extremely important in establishing a reputation within the community itself. The second category of graffiti that I noticed were throw-ups. Throw-ups are basically a step above tags because they are still done in a quick and efficient manner, but are larger and done with more detail. They are often done in two or so colors and in a bubble letter style. A darker color is usually used as an outline, and a lighter color is used to fill it in. They are most often done on illegal walls, so there is not much time to put in major amounts of effort, but they are still done big enough to attract attention. The abandoned building on Jackson Avenue had an incredible amount of throw-ups along its walls. I found a black, red, and white throw-up by the artist Omar, whose tags I found on street signs a little further away on Carondelet Street. In his throw-up, Omar wrote 10th Ward, indicating that he is from the 10th Ward. 
From what I have seen, Omar has done a good job at marking up his territory in his own area of residence, but he hasn't really ventured out of the 10th Ward. This most likely indicates that he is not an amateur, but he is also not highly reputable. Another throw-up found on the same building is that of Dookie. The screen, red, black, and white styling of the pseudonym is more intricate than Omar's, but still constitutes a throw-up due to its bubble letter style, solid coloring, and lack of specific detail. What's interesting about this throw-up is the fact that someone has spray-painted the beginning of another throw-up over it. When two artists write over each other's work, it can mean one of two things. Either the first artist's reputation and skills are not up to par, and thus they inappropriately chose their space to graffiti in, or they have beef with the other graffiti artists. In this case, Dookie's work is actually quite good, and so he probably has beef with this other artist. Beef in the graffiti community usually sticks to ruining each other's work, but sometimes it can get physical. This is another reason why pseudonyms are very important. Throw-ups are usually much bigger than tags and are often done in high traffic areas for the purpose of gaining fame. This You Go Girl throw-up was done on the same building on Jackson Avenue, but on the highest point, legible to cars on the busy street below. Writing on a space that is visible to passersby is essential, but another technique used by graffiti artists to gain maximum exposure is to put their throw-ups on the sides of train cars. I found a parked train on St. Charles near South Carrollton that had a really cool red, blue, and white throw-up done by Sher. Within his piece, the year 2010 is drawn, indicating that this throw-up has been circulating for at least three years now. What's also interesting about this throw-up are the words drawn around his pseudonym, Nas, Run, Oops, and TDK. These are most likely shout-outs to a crew that Sher is part of, as I mentioned before when talking about tags. This one throw-up has probably gained Sher and his crew a lot of recognition for the three years that it has been circulating. Another throw-up that I was extremely impressed with was done by AIDS. The reason I was so impressed by this throw-up was that it was done in an extremely busy intersection near Lee Circle. While it makes sense that graffiti artists would graffiti in high traffic areas, you have to keep in mind that it is illegal, and so finding a throw up this big in a heavily patrolled area was astounding. This led me to the conclusion that AIDS is an experienced artist and knows what he is doing. A quick Google search revealed that AIDS is pretty famous in New Orleans, as well as Los Angeles. The third category that I noted were masterpieces, or pieces for short. Pieces are extremely intricate works of art that use a lot of colors, characters, and designs. Pieces are often very big and are sometimes done legally. Pieces can be artistic renditions of their pseudonyms, like this piece I found by Samo in an empty lot on North Peter Street. In this piece, Samo's real artistic ability was demonstrated as he used at least five different colors and a very interesting coloring technique. In the same lot that Samo made the piece of his name were multiple pieces that absolutely blew me away. The first piece on the left was a man with a Polaroid camera. In each picture is a letter, eventually spelling out Basquiat, which is Samo's real name. Jean Michael Basquiat is a famous American graffiti artist from the 1970s and the 1980s. These pieces are from a brief visit to New Orleans in 1988. He began as an underground graffiti artist but eventually rose to fame through his graffiti. One of the major themes in his works revolves greatly around the treatment of African Americans throughout history. In this piece, there are mentions of the Jim Crow laws as well as the 1995 Coosa County murders. In the same lot lies another piece done by Bones. Bones is a highly reputable graffiti artist in New Orleans. This piece contains the phrases, yeah you, right, and be nice or leave, as well as a very creative rendition of his name. Another celebrity that made his mark in New Orleans in 2008 is Banksy. Banksy created a number of pieces all throughout the city, but unfortunately, many of them have been damaged or destroyed. This piece of a man with a paintbrush painting over a crudely drawn stick figure man has been covered with plexiglass and is enclosed by a fence. The reason that this piece is covered with plexiglass is because other graffiti artists have graffitied over his work in order to gain their own fame. By associating themselves with someone as famous as Banksy, even if it means ruining his work, they receive attention. The Grey Ghost is one of the most notable of these people. The Grey Ghost specifically goes around to Banksy's pieces in New Orleans and paints over all or part of the image with a silver-gray paint. 
It is unclear whether this person is a graffiti artist himself or an anti-graffiti vigilante, but regardless, he's gained much acclaim in New Orleans. Many people argue that graffiti is not art, but a lot of this can be attributed to the illegality of the deed. When graffiti artists are forced to tag or throw up their names as quickly and efficiently as possible, it is not surprising that the results aren't exactly aesthetically pleasing to the public. But when given a large amount of space as well as a long period of time to create their piece, graffiti artists' work is absolutely incredible. In the New Orleans community, I often overlooked graffiti. But now that I understand the context behind it all, I've come to appreciate the tags and throw-ups that I see just as much as the pieces. The drive to achieve fame in the subculture as well as express artistic ability is incredible. And I really have a lot of newfound respect for the artists that graffiti the streets of New Orleans.